talent is distributed equally across the world. There are as many smart and motivated people in sub-Saharan Africa as there are in North America or Europe, but opportunity is not. And so for many years, my personal interest in this space has been to change this, to increase opportunities. And the two tools that I like to use are technology and learning. If you were interested in any topic and you would find other people interested in the same topic, you could connect with each other online and learn it, and you didn't have to wait for an expert to teach it to you. But when we're thinking about the future of learning and the future of education, we kind of want to know, you know, if lectures are not how students learn, then how, how do they learn? The first P is P for projects, because when you um, build something or you create something, and creating can be a poem or a novel, it doesn't have to be an engineering project, uh, a lot of the things that you had assumed before, theoretically, turn out to be not true. You run into a lot of difficulties, and there's a lot of learning that happens when you actually create the project. The number one indicator for success was the ability to join or form study groups. So it wasn't how many courses you were taking, it wasn't if you were taking big courses or small courses, um, it wasn't all the other things you would have expected to hear. The number one most important thing was, can you find other people that help you and that you, would, you can help them when they need help? The third P is passion. And passion is, um, essentially means that if you are really interested in something, if it connects to your personal interests, you will work much harder and you will go much deeper than if I'm telling you that you should learn something. So we try to en enable all of our students to find things that they are passionate about, pick technologies that they are excited about, uh, choose uh, projects that they think can change the world. Generally, right, learning should be an experience where you are taking risks because, um, and this is actually another quote from Joey, he says, no one has ever won the Nobel Prize for following the rules. And it's true. Uh, if you just follow the rules, you know, you, you can learn a lot and you can be very successful, but for real learning to happen, you have to feel that you're allowed to break the rules. So there are millions of computers and they're connected by cables. But what I think of when I see this is the people in front of the computers. And that's when I think the technology becomes a paradigm changer. If it's just about connecting computers, it's less interesting. If it's a, about connecting millions of people who could be learning with each other, I think this changes almost everything. It has three principles for, for success in everything that it does. And we build a lot of technology. And those three principles are uniqueness. So if someone else is doing this already, we, we try to do something else. It's impact. So it's not enough to just have an idea. It has to change the world or someone's life in some way. It could be many people, it could be a few people in a really deep, meaningful way. And then the last one is my favorite one, it's magic. And we, those are the three official success criteria of the Media Lab. Our open social learning community is the future of education. I think so. I hope I've made a little bit of a case uh, why I think so. Um, I want to connect two ideas that I mentioned before because I think that's very important. One is I talked about peer learning and how in the Harvard assessment study they found that the ability to join study groups or, or form new study groups was the most important factor for being a successful Harvard student. Now, if you, th if you forget about Harvard, which is a few thousand students, and you think of the internet with millions, hundreds of millions of people, then the power that that skill gives you becomes much larger.